All right, welcome everyone. My name is Paul Phillips, also known as Journal Artista. And uh, I'm going to start by showing some of the file folders I've worked on for the DD Challenge. Um, hmm. I don't like the fact that you guys can half see me over here. Let's see. Ah, well, you have to do it. Um, so, if you guys don't remember from last week, I talked a little about the uh, Dee's Challenge, which is an inspiration box that, uh, you know, every week she gives us two themes and um, we file them in our box and we collect during the week um, inspiration based on those themes. So, I shall bring out the whole box. <clears throat> so, if you remember, here's my box. I didn't do anything else to the outside, but uh, yeah, she called it Alphabetica, so I, I made tabs. So rather than having a file folder for each letter, I just made uh, a tab. So here's, I made file little, little tabs, and then I just used some older scrap of paper or new or whatever. I just used scrap of paper to, and then to <clears throat> divide them, and then I'll put the um, folders in there. So the first one, here's the index. So I made the index. Some older things, but I, I used some matte glossy accents, which is now discontinued. Boo! So I have to say about that. So I really like that. It's much brighter in real life. It's just kind of showing washed out, washed out here. I use some inside, same thing, matte accents on that. So really fun. I mean, I put numbers. I put all types of things. It's blurry. Is it still blurry? She does camera. Dee Dee does. Dee Dee streams. Um, Dee Dee streams on Wednesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So my index is at the front, and uh, I just put that on the back because I liked it. And then inside, it's called the Alphabetica. So. Do, do, do. So, so to know what files, you know, we already have is just the index. So under A, I have artists, famous artists. Under B, I have birds in blue and D, doors and whatnot. So, for example, uh, birds. I did do my birds file. So this is the finished from. Uh, this is the one we started last Saturday night. This is, uh, so I changed up a few things. I added some stuff. I did some white stamping with a graphic 45 peacock stamp. You can see. And uh, this is from a calendar. And it was funny because I think Joyce in her wonderful gift from Lynn, I almost thought that she had that one. Anyway, so that's my bird's folder. I am actually quite happy. There's a little owl up here. And then on the back, that was from a magazine, probably Oprah. And then on the inside, so I glued that. Remember I, I told you guys last week, I put, uh, I bought those five by seven pockets. So any little thing you do, I can put in there. So like this bird cage that I thought I was going to use. So this is going to collect inspiration now. I did it, Valerie. And that's all I got in there so far. So here's my doors. Just some paper from uh, hmm, Bow Bunny, I think. The door. This is a door knocker.
so some stamping and wood grain and goodness. Wow, strange glare tonight. Bow bunny times this. And then uh, that's the back. So I really went to went to town, shall we say. So inside my doors one, which I'm finding very hard door things, although Sharon um Cal Sharon C uh she sent me this napkin. Look at that. Whew. That's exciting. I also have this little thing I pasted on there and again little pocket with some uh some of the door stuff. So that's inspiration, but I mean it's so nice this fabric. It's from Crate and Barrel. She sent it to me a while ago. Um well, I'm gonna have to cover a journal with that. So what else did I do? Oh, so I was lucky, you know, we went through a, or I went through anyways you know, a couple different streams where, where we did some file folders. If you remember this one, which I haven't added anything to it. This is my Paris one. Uh, still working on it. Some graphic 45. And then it's just it on the inside. But this is one of those um, ones that have the, where you can add a bunch of papers. So, of course, I've got lots of Paris uh, stuff that I'm... I'm collecting in that bad boy. And then that's on the back. So that's all I have in the box so far. But I've also got a ton. Well, this is what I'm, I'm, I did numbers. Because numbers, I mean, I've got a whole heck of a lot of number stuff. Um, this time I use sepia accents. These are cutouts. Those big numbers are cutouts for some Tim Holtz paper. Lots of older paper mixed with new. Hold on. Try not to shake. I had a bit of coffee today. Some use some old things. I really like this, uh, these are old warehouse, um, Teresa, was it Teresa Collins that did that? No. Anyways, they're really old. As you can tell by the 2004 and all that stuff. So I had fun with the numbers. Nothing in that one yet. But really, really like the numbers. I'm really having fun with going to town on these file folders. Uh, I am working on blue. This is, uh, and anytime, I, I say anytime that I can use a whole sheet of rub-ons, I get real excited. <laughs> so, I put a whole sheet of rub-ons. Because I, because it's an alphabetical project, I'm still, um, it's a challenge. I'm incorporating letters in every single folder, regardless whether you know there's letters in it. So this this is blue. This one says laugh. I'm trying to read upside down. Laugh as much as you breathe and love as much as you live. And then there's an old basic gray thing here. Um, as you can see, I used two artist seller workshop stencils. I think I saw Lisa come in. Uh, the first one being these bubbles. Maybe Lisa can tell us which which uh, one comes in. And then over that, uh, I use the water. She, there's this great line. I'm going to show you my stencil storage I did. I know it glares. Oh, man. What is up with it today? Maybe it's just because I'm shaky. The new meds I'm on make me very shaky. Anyways, Seafoam and Surf. Art Warehouse, there's my Tracy. Art Warehouse by Daniel Johnson, that's exactly what they were. Okay, um, so that's my blue I'm working on. Maps, so far, whole bunch of different maps. There's my, for my Tracy. 
there's some retro Seven Gypsies in there. Um, sea foam is the bubbles and surf is the water one. I'll show you the rest of the stencils in a minute. So all I've done is tape, tape, um, gel me a whole bunch of different maps. Some maps, uh, I think I've got some from Julie and some old paper and whatnot. So I'm working on that. I'm also working on a folder for, you know, when you get these type of things, like famous artists, famous paintings, those are inspiration to me. So that's what, uh, you can see I put letters on that one. So I'm working on that too. It's in process, in process. I like the colors, totally different for me, this weird dabby dabby type swishy stuff. <clears throat> and lastly, I'm working on a garden one. This is from a long time ago, but. Working on garden. Anything that's white, it's really showing a crazy glare. But the purple in here, then there's this one purple flower. There you go. In that picture. So I'm working on that. Uh, hmm. And that's it. So one one of the things that I, I was doing is going through a whole bunch like these are old National Geographic magazines. And finally, uh, here's a nice hummingbird for the bird folder. Uh, here's one for maps. There's a map at the top. I'm loving this project too. Absolutely. Bob. This one for doors. I, I think it's in some type of cave. There's another door, but I think this is, no, this is blue. Is it upside down? Oh no, you can see. And the rest of that one is here. Oh no, I lied. Look at that bad boy. Try, you know, I might try to draw this. It's such a clear picture. Uh, so anyways, I had fun. There, there he is in his full glory. But these are the type of things that now you can go through. This is for blue. Now you can go through your, your stuff. This is for my garden one. How beautiful is that? Um, oh, this is an emu, emu, EQ, EQ, I think it's an emu, is that how you say it? No, it's a bird, is it a bird? So this is what I was wondering, is this a bird? I think it's an emu, somebody help me, yeah, is it a bird? Scary. <laughs> It's like, think of a shark, right? You may think a shark is a fish, but it's not a fish. It's a mammal. Right? It's a mammal. So maybe it wasn't a bird. Just saying. <laughs> That's why I asked. <laughs> There's some uh, map in New Orleans. Um, oh, and this is what I found for doors. Look at this. This is probably the best... Uh, it's like a, a vintage, an old mailbox thing. Yes, I'm hurting with the doors. It's, no, like, I, I mean, I went through magazines like you wouldn't believe. I was sick in bed uh, most of the week. Um, anyway, so I went through a ton of magazines and ripped out stuff. I've also been working on a series of postcards. So basically, I just have to add a couple things, and then uh, so washed out, it bothers me. Um, so it's for a bicycle. A couple of people's names on them, and and two are going to Dee Dee to give away. Uh, oh, is Miss I Carry Love here? Anyway, I'm sending this one to Carrie. I'm going to put, come on, focus, focus, I'm going to put here, fishy, 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 because she has a, anyways, there's a fish in that basket, there we go, 
Um, so I, de I debated on a title. I, that's why I, I have a little bit of a sense of humor too. And uh, there's a ruler on there. You know, because men like to um, <clears throat> brag about the size of their fish. So I was going to write eight inches. That's what they all say. <laughs> I like this one. This one, um, she's got, <laughs> yeah, so it's a nice, it's a nice little series, a nice little series I was working on. <laughs> so maybe one of you lovely people will win one over at Dee Dee's. Um, so before I go to the camera, some last quick thing. Here's my, now, this is an old 6x6 six six Mrs. Grossman's album. And uh, I know the wonderful lady that was streaming over on Prima, she showed a 12x12 12 12 that she was um, storing her Prima screens in. Um, so what I did was, you know, if I'm going to do a 6x6 six six mini album, scrapbooking wise, I got different albums like you know I've got some nice KI memories ones whatever so purpose repurposing for this was really you know really good for me so I had to double some of them up but I'm telling you like I mean I some of them triple but it's not even thick look how thick it is I mean really it's only three inches at the most so it doesn't I mean I have a ton of, of stencils in here and they fit so nicely and even if you double or triple them up because I don't clean my stencils you know you can still see what's going on there because um, you know last Saturday when I was streaming all my stencils were stuck together and it's amazing amazing how many bird stencils I actually have <laughs> last, last week when I was like do I have any bird stencils I mean look at this stencil I found the whole thing is birds <laughs> so, so I mean, I did put uh, you know different different ones in there. Some of the primas I actually took apart because uh, they're a pain in the butt. So I cut them off that little screwy thing that they had them on, and some of their longer masks. Um, some ones that Laurel cut out for me that I really like to use. These are the ones that Rachel gave to me. And then the wonderful artist seller ones at the back. So this is the, I didn't put the other one away. This is the water one. You see I, corals. And that's the one that the, I, I love it. You, you know, it's funny because you think it's like, oh, water, I wouldn't use it. But the texture, and actually, while well, I have this open, I might as well put this away, right? The textures just even if you didn't use them as water like okay I used brown on here it's absolutely awesome and then you can keep them all the same and then this is the bubbles that goes with the coral these coral ones again you don't necessarily have to use them for corals right coral reef but the texture just absolutely I'm telling you you know I love crafters workshop too I have a ton of crafters workshop stencils but I'm telling you, artist seller stencils has uh, really cool designs. I mean, how can we forget the wonderful Cathedral series, my favorite, and Gears. So, and there's still some room. Um, this was a 20-page protector one. Uh, I'm, I like it so much, I might do it with my 12 by 12s But the 12 by 12s when, you know, I have them in uh, one of those craft keeper plastic things and they don't because they're all 12 they don't get tangled too much so I might not bother with it and the entire time I don't know if Julia's watching it but yeah, I put that in there so whenever whenever I work when I was working on all of those file folders I put um hey Shauna you know look at the textures so Whenever I had uh, leftover paints, leftover whatever, I you know put it in here. So there's the 
Annie's not used to me. The poor girl. She doesn't, she still doesn't go down. She's so afraid of the puppies, the dogs, that she still doesn't go downstairs. And, um, and so if she hears me talking upstairs, she just wants to see me. So I really, really like uh, this type of desk journal where this is, I used one of, this is a graphic 45 stamp that I was using on one of those postcards. So I really suggest, you know, this is when I was stenciling on my num uh, my index one. Oh, anyway. And then it's amazing when you just throw things down, what comes out. Uh, this is the cathedral one uh, from Artist Seller, but there's, you probably couldn't tell on one of those postcards, but here, fishy, fishy, fishy. You know, I, I had that stamp in my mind, and I'm telling you, it was in the bottom. Some of you guys were here when I was showing my little art room tour. It was at the bottom of that tote, that huge tote. <laughs> and I took every one of those stinking stamps out to find it. Um, this folds over. This is one of the DD, the one of the journals. Look, I used a whole thing of rub-ons when I was cleaning. Uh, what pockets? Am I in that scrapbook album? Oh. You use 12 by 12 scrapbook album with pages that have 4 by 6 by 6 pockets so you can see four stencils at a time. Oh, now Lisa, that is smart. I'll read that again for if people are watching the recording. So Lisa from Artist Seller, instead of using a 6 by 6 mini album to store her stencils, she uses a big 12 by 12 scrapbook album and buys the page protectors that have four 6 by 6 pockets so you can see all four stencils rather than having overlaid like mine now. That's awesome. Archivers does do your mail order. <clears throat> I know for sure. Anyways, part of the, the when I was cleaning, um, you know, when I saw something that was this, and uh, guys, these stents, this was from, oh, what line was this? I think it was um, Chatterbox. <clears throat> anyway, I just used it because Done. So I really suggest having one of these type of just a, a journal. And what I like about this type, it's just little. So I actually have two on the go um, that I was working on at the same time. Right. So if one's drying, I have two of them around. And this is just watercolor paper. You guys have seen me do it before. It's just watercolor paper that, you know, from Michael's that come in a pad and uh, pressing, pressing baby wipes there. So this is how it starts. I know the other one, I, I've had the other journal, this journal on my desk for a long time. So, um, so uh, this is just a newer one, right? But that's how you build up the layers. Again, I was, you know, I was using that water stencil so much that I have it in more than one spot. So I like to work on multiple things, and, you know, you'll see me pull these out more than once probably tonight. All right. Whew, lots of talking. So, you know, I don't do very many canvases. It's just I love books. I've always, always loved books. A lot of people say, Paula, why don't you do canvases? It's just not necessarily something that, that inspires, you know, I rather work in a book because I love books. But one thing, um, while I was on my health break, health retirement, hiatus, whatever you want to call it, um, I left some of my brushes in water and they completely dried out like, like, uh, like hard as a rock dried out. So I want to create a canvas. I'm going to call it, um, what did I say I was going to call it? Retired or something. And uh, I glued them down with some super heavy, and it's not really called super heavy. It's just called heavy gel medium. So remember we were talking last week about the different types of gel medium. Uh, ah. And that's molding paste. 
So anyways, this stuff is super, super thick. And they say when you're with gel mediums, the thicker the gel medium, the heavier of something that... Let me rephrase that, excuse me. The heavier an object you're trying to glue down, the heavier gel medium you need. So Dee Dee uses the matte medium, which she would be so proud because I have very little left. Oh, Maggie. See, look, now I've got the muscles to do it. <laughs> I mean, it's almost done. So the lightest things, tissue paper, you know, magazine images, that's what you would use. You'd use soft gel for maybe scrap of paper and, you know, whatnot. Yeah, much evaporation. So anyways, I, I glued um, them down with the super heavy gel medium. Uh, I have put two coats of gesso on here now. And then some of them, I'm really worried about this one being wobbly, um, but I, I don't think it'll fall off. I think if I hang it, yeah, sorry if my head was in the way. This is just a cheap one from Michaels. Uh, it did take about two days to dry. So I just put the different ones you can see. Did I lose my chat? Can somebody type in something? Oh, thanks, Jean. So I reversed some, uh, whatnot. I like how that looks. I made sure it was an odd number. Uh, by some crazy fluke, I have almost the exact same space on the side. So I might hit this real quick with the shot of the heat gun. And, uh, ooh, one more thing I'm working on. I'm working on this box. I just put... There's a bunch of different things. I think you guys remember when I made a box for Laurel a few years ago, um, I had this molding paste. This is heavy, like a heavy molding paste, not light molding paste, but regular modeling paste. I always get that confused. Molding paste or modeling paste? Um, anyway, so this box was sitting, it was just from Dollarama, a dollar store. It was been sitting on my desk for a while, and... Uh, So anyways, finally decided to cover the rest of it. I did put a, a coat of that Croco from Viva. I really like it. I didn't put a thick enough coat because I was trying to, I'm trying to build up, of course, layers, right? So I'm working on, I'm working on this, but it did have, it does, it did crack, crackle. The crackle medium's already in the, in the paint. It's awesome stuff. It, it's a, it's a little pricey for sure. But it's it's definitely good stuff. So I'm working on that too. Nice little little box. I'm gonna you know do it up. So lots of things on the go, uh, which I'm pretty pretty happy about. So I'm gonna heat this. I'm gonna just make sure that it's dry, and then we're gonna we're gonna attempt to do a canvas. I think this might be like the first one I've ever done on stream of all these videos. Heat gun. Just before we started the show, I, I had put on a second layer of gesso, so I just wanted to make sure wanted to make sure it was dry. Um, but when I put the I put the uh, heavy gel on when I used it as a glue with a <clears throat> not a spatula. Oh my goodness, my mind's not working. What's this called again? How can I not know what this? A palette knife. I'll be all right. So I, I made sure to make some texture. Hi, Dar. Just saw you. Hi, Vicky. Hoping I said it. hello to everybody. Lucy Jane, welcome. Anyways, so I made sure to add some wavy, wavy, wavies. Okay. So if I'm going to do a canvas, I guess it's got to be blue, right?
I did one last thing. Try, excuse my reach, the DD smash and drag technique. Um, oh, I dropped my. Not so, not so good. I, I'm wondering two things. Probably not using enough spray, and number two. I'm wondering if my mat's just too old. That one I sprayed some water on. So that one turned out half decent. Now this, this is weird. It's like a bikini. That might be what I draw. But I use a lot of spray on that one. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I tried to smack it and drag it and it just didn't come out right. It just didn't come out like hers. Welcome, Gypsy. So I don't, I don't know. This one turned out half decent. I'm probably not using enough. It's kind of like, kind of like when Dee Dee first used her um, matte medium. And I'm like, it's not sticking. It's because I don't use as much as I'm trying to conserve it. Why blue? Um, I absolutely love blue. <laughs> I like working in blues. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to do some blue. And it is a canvas, so I'm going to go pretty fancy. I'm going to break out the golden uh, jet, uh, heavy acrylics here. And some green. I'm going to start with phthalo blue. I will add some greens and purples and as we layer it on, but... Uh, Sherry likes work. I think everybody has their go-to colors. I've been doing a lot of browns lately, but um, all right, let's find a big brush. But I like to, uh, yeah, I like. Whoa, that's bad news. I'm gonna have to move my camera. <laughs> I don't want to flash it. Apologize for that. Don't want to be booted. Oh, that was the wrong way. Lisa? Oh. So I want to probably find a bigger brush. And let's just say I don't have too many big brushes other than the cheap ones from Michaels, but you know, I guess that's what we use. I'm just going to use these Artist Loft one inch flat brushes. Oh, we're going to stencil, we're going to spray, we're going to do all, lots of good stuff. I'm going to start with the phthalo blue green shade. Phthalo. There's too many consonants in that. Uh, thing. Thanks, Lisa. I appreciate it. So I'm just going to use the side of my craft sheet as a palette here. Oh, I will. I'm going to, I'm going to upload uh, the pictures of all of my folders um, for the Alphabetica onto Dee Dee's uh, Flickr group. The, oh, Dar likes red. Dar, did you see that I, where I have your, your painting? And I'm working finally. Dar missed the whole... Well, a lot of you guys probably missed the whole spiel uh, about some of my goals. But uh, I'm finally working on something special for Dar. I have so many projects on the go, it's absolutely unbelievable. But it's fun. So I'm going to probably paint the edges black, so I want, I'm just going to make sure I go to the edges with the paint, but I, I'm not going to worry about painting the entire edges. I did hung, I, every, well, everybody can do a test, I hung it up, it's, it's, uh, I've got art all around me now. Um, of course, I mean, your picture is absolutely uh, 
Man, phenomenal. Phenomenal is the only word I can think of. So I'm, I'm going to leave some areas. And you want to, you know, when you're working on something that is 3D like this, you want to make sure you kind of put it underneath. <clears throat> make sure it gets underneath the those areas. But when I do some spraying on it, I know it'll cover it all up. But I do want to leave some areas white, you know, when I put some other layers down. Now when you use something like heavy gel medium, <laughs> Darn. The gel, you know, it's 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 heavy duty glue, so you don't have to worry about things falling off or whatnot. I am adding a little bit of water to some of this just to move it around a little bit. I'm really interested in, in you know parts that are darker than others, leaving some parts that are white uh, for the next color. Discontinued what teal? Oh, you missed co cobalt blue. Well, there goes Annie again. I swear she was in heat. It makes her sound so sad. She starts crying and the dogs start barking. And we went for a long walk today. Oh my goodness, it's gorgeous out today. It was like 11 degrees, which I think the wonderful Kim converted into Fahrenheit is 53. I think I saw the tweet. It was a little wet because all the snow was melting and uh, but oh they just loved it. It was so nice out. All right, so look at all this delicious. They they discontinued a specific teal. Now I don't know, Golden, if they um if it was just the entire color rain line or just in the fluids. I'm just gonna put this to the side for a second and get out one of these journals. And this is what I do when I have extra. Um, I just kind of flip through and say okay. Let's add it to, and sometimes I add it to more than one page. And I don't think, I don't worry if I'm covering something else up. So I'll just do that and then put it to the side. And that's why I have two journals, because lots of times something's drying. Uh, this one does have gesso on it already, so. This watercolor paper I used was um, a little bit thicker. Then the Cheapo Basics from Michaels. <clears throat> And ladies, this and gentlemen, this is uh, just stapled, just a pamphlet stapled together. As my wonderful friend Joyce was doing this morning, you can just have a magazine off to your side, excuse me, this afternoon, and not have, if you don't have a journal, you can just paint over stuff in magazines. Um, I tried to do that once. I started, I think, I think uh, I showed it on stream. 
I had this old Holt Renfrew, which is a very fancy store here in Canada. And I did the same thing. I was just scraping paints on and uh, different colors, smoosh, smooshing pages together, smooshing pages together to get text the texture. That's not my dog barking. So that it is fun. Then you can either like there. <laughs> I barked at the dog outside. Um, like Joyce said, you can just rip this out and use it as your own paper or, you know, art journal in that. So, and I chose this because it's it's heavy. This paper, like this, is a heavy, heavy, heavy stuff. All right, let's go back to the canvas. Now that we have all that. Sorry that Ash is barking at the dog. Oh, speaking of which, before I show this, I've got a new puppy. As Joyce would say. Wait for it. It's not glossy paper. Oh, look at the pillow. It's like a baby Bella. <laughs> so I use it. I use it as a my chair, my back. <laughs> I bought it at Home Sense. All right, I'm gonna get a, a baby wipe here. A a fresh one. And I am gonna wipe it just a little bit. In so many areas. Now, when you work with artist grade paint like this um there is a lot a lot of pigment and you know i know i've said it a hundred times before if i've said it once uh i never if i'm wiping off paint that's artist grade like that i never let it go to waste i think i actually talked about this on my dvd so i'm just going to wipe it off a little bit so look at how much pigment is on Oh, that. Goodness, she hears a dog barking outside and it's like the end of the world. I love how you can wipe back and uh, start really to see the texture of the gel. Um, I have a heavy gel medium that I use to. And I'm just kind of. Sticking my baby wipe in there and scooting it around, not applying too much pressure. Not that, not that the gel medium, the heavy gel won't take it, but uh, and this can get messy when you're working when you're working with acrylic grade paint. Sorry, now everybody's dog's barking. It's just, it'll be like a never ending. Dog outside barks, which makes my dog bark, which makes your dog bark, which makes some dog bark outside your street, which makes another. That would be it. It would be like around the world simultaneous dog barking. All right. Look at the the way that you can really only oh, hold this up. Do, do, do. See now you can really see where the nice ridges um, I do have some extra dead brushes, Dar. This one this one's kind of special to me because it's about you know, retiring my brushes to get healthy. So, like I said, when you have a baby wipe, I'm frozen? <clears throat> so now I can, you know, go to a page in a journal 
and you can get an awesome, just light watercolor, nice looking background. And then, you know, this helps a lot for people that have that um, blank page syndrome where they're really afraid of starting something and just stare at the white space and don't know what to do. Start like this. And there's so much paint, you know, when you use the artist grade. So much pigment that I could do this on multiple sections. I can also take out a stencil. Let's find one. Oh my goodness, Asha. This is another artist solar stencil. And you can push it through that. And because it's a baby wave, you don't have to worry about it. Just You know, you don't have to be gentle with it. This is a very wet baby wipe, so some of it went through the... And that's the thing, lots of people say, oh, I don't want to buy the artist, you know, the golden acrylics, the heavy body, they're so expensive, it's $10 or $20 a tube. But really... They, it, I, I probably put way too much paint out for that first one. It goes so much farther, further. This is a grammatical class for me tonight. That it's, you get your money's worth out of it. I mean, I can go on and on and there's so much. Now, if you were if you were doing this with craft paint, there's uh, no way, no way you would get this mileage out of it. And see how when you just have those journals hanging around, you know you can just add quickly add these type of things um, and create some cool things. If you don't want the juiciness from the baby wipe, you know, you can always just do the dab, 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 and then it, you'll get, uh, <clears throat> you won't get as much, but I mean, I love how that looks. That's just a little, and you're not wasting anything. And I still, <sighs> oh my goodness. That's why you saw earlier, um, sometimes I just leave them in my journal and press them. And then what happens is you get the, uh, the nice texture, I guess, of the baby white. So let's, let's do this. Somebody remind me to go back to it later tonight. I'll put it under something heavy. <laughs> All right. So don't be afraid, like, you know, I don't have a lot of the heavy body. Um, I do have probably more of the, what's the word I'm looking for? The fluid acrylics than I do the heavy body that are artist grade. But, uh, you know, the way I bought them is just one by one, just by one, you know, and, uh, and build up your collection like that. You don't have to go out and buy a ton of them, maybe buy a starter set with a coupon or whatnot. But that's, you know, I work, I like to have all the different ones, right? I do, don't, I'm not knocking craft paint. I use craft paint all the time. I often, you know, um, some people cringe, but I often mix student grade craft paint, you know, heavy body. I mix them all together. All right. Oh my goodness, Asha. Now she's just going to bark and bark and bark. I don't know if she wants to do it. Okay. Ah. <sighs> 
<laughs> That's a sin. Oh, Jess, tell your Canadian. Jess, when are you moving to Ontario? I think you need to move to Ontario. Like somewhere around Burnington. Coffee. So this this is um that was phthalo blue green shade and and that's part of one of the um I bought a starter set I think it was six that came with red yellow blue green black white I think <clears throat> all right so now I'm gonna add the phthalo blue green shade after I dry it a little bit heat gun You want to get it fairly dry before you put the next color on uh, or else it might bubble. Okay, so I'm going to use the Phthalo Blue Green shade. This is, Again, I believe this is one that comes in the starter set that you can get at Michael's. You can get it with the coupon. Coupon. Paint starter. So this time I'm only going to use half of that paint, maybe not even. Um, like that's probably even too much. Oh, can I show you my, my what I'm using as a new water jar that I got at Home Sense? Look at this bad boy. I know some people have seen them before. But I love when it gets all drippy drippy with the different you know, gesso and paints and whatever. There are markers and brushes and pens and all that goodness. Need some hookers green? <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna forget that show. Um, the hookers green I only have in Liquitex basics. Not that that's a bad thing necessarily. All right. I'm gonna use a slightly smaller brush this time. So hopefully everybody had a good week. I appreciate everybody being here. You know, uh, it's great to be back. <clears throat> and hopefully everybody's starting the new year out right. I'm really going to call my dad after this. Oh, maybe it's too late. My father moved back to Newfoundland, uh, where he's originally from, in his retirement. And I just saw on the news before I came up here that they had some huge storm that knocked power out and like like feet and feet of snow all at once so I don't know if his uh, where he lives it was affected but he lives right on the uh, Cape right on the coast uh, if anybody's been in Newfoundland right where the Bonavista lighthouse is up that road so you know you can see the ocean from where he is
So I'm doing a lot of scrubby scrubby with the brush. And um, getting it all over here. Oh, Tim, Tim Holtz's new releases. Oh my goodness. You know, I'm not a big um, uh, card maker anymore. And if I do, I have a ton of stuff that's already holiday themed. So his last release, you know, I wasn't interested in really anything because just, you know, I don't buy die. I necessarily want to buy dice that are um, holiday themed. That's just because I, I know I wouldn't use them as much. But this release, I almost want every one of those dies. Eiffel Tower, come on, you're killing me. No pen nib. I'm, I'm still holding out for the pen nib embossing folder. One day he's going to give it to me, I know. But anyway, oh, what's a gorgeous. And stuff you can use. That's what I like. I like the tags and stuff that you can use more than once. All right. If you don't want to dilute your color too much, you know, like you see me dipping into water quite a bit here. I always have two things of water on the go. I have the the, the one that you saw my brushes in that's got gesso. It's the one I clean. And then I have a semi-clean <laughs> water there that I, if I'm adding water to something that I use. All right. I like that. So, um, artist grade paint. I know I say it all the time, but it's very important. It takes a long time to dry. So I can hold off, you know, hold off a while um, before wiping this off. If you start if I started wiping it off right now, it would completely wipe off the paint. So I, I do take um, the odd moment. So I think this is the time I'm this time I'm gonna add, you know, I'm dipping my fingers into this water. And I'm just flicking it in a couple spots here. Adding a little bit of texture with splottage. The Distress Paints, now, I can't tell my ear praise this. <clears throat> Who has Adirondack Paints? Raise your hand. Uh, I have had not had the best luck with Adirondack Paints. Now, I know you just add water to it, and you mix it up, and, and it does, you know, but it's uh, it's a little frustrating sometimes to get that paint out of that top. Just saying. So I'm hoping, you know, the Distress, because I love the colors of Distress. You know, I think we all do. Hopefully their paints will be, uh, that this this release, maybe they he's improved on the, the tops. <clears throat> yeah, the actual paint daubers, the distressed paints. I mean, the uh, while this is drying, I can. Oh, Kim, you see my puppy? Where's my puppy? I mean, this is, I think, a pure pug. Oh, look at it. Uh, yeah, so Bella got a little bit why it's up here is um she got a little bit uh, angry or jealous of this new puppy uh so she started chewing it <laughs> now i use it up here bad puppy kim still couldn't see it all right so here's a, a dauber from the adirondack line That's wild plum. We'll put this off to the second. So again, I'm I'm letting the the water the water is keeping the paint underneath it wet. So when I start wiping it back, it'll it'll resist it there. So uh, <clears throat> let's get out my journals here. One thing I do about like about daubers and paint is I I do like to edge things and uh, let's see. Let me go, we'll go over here. So I, I think that's dry actually. 
and you have to dip it in. I mean, the, the thing is, I guess you can use, if you like the colors and you get them, you can, you don't have to use the dauber. You can, you, I mean, you have to squeeze really hard. I'm not even sure I'm going to get any out of it. It's dried up. But I do like, oh, there we go. You have to, you just have to squeeze. I, you know, I do like to be able to make lines like that, especially, let's find something that has paper. Let's go to my journal. I think it actually might even be the right to put this off to the side. <clears throat> One of the current journals I'm working on. Ooh, I don't know if Lisa Lisa's still watching. I love the map stencils. Look at that. Love. So I'm working on this layout. Um, so what I did is I put some book paper down, some old book paper that Julia gave me, and uh, and then I <clears throat> put a layer of brown on there. Then I stenciled gesso through the map uh, stencil from Artist Cellar, and then I'm adding adding brown layers of paint on top of it. Love. There's four maps in it: Paris, Amsterdam, Venice. Help me out, London. I think. Don't ask me which one's which. I have no clue what one that is. <laughs> but I love the texture. So I bought these um, shoes. They're called Sketcher Tone Ups. No, not Shape Ups. So they're not... Let me see if you can uh, see them. They just look like that. So they don't look like those big round bottom type stuff. But they've got these, they've got those fitness ball, balancey ball things in, in, in there. Uh, it's hard to walk on them, I'm telling you, they work. So I did this page. Hopefully this looks like fire. Not sure. I, I actually used, believe it or not, um, oil pastels, which is strange for me. So anyways, I did a whole page. Um, the texture in the background, I don't probably can't tell but uh, it came with some <clears throat> the box had tissue paper in it so it actually had tone up sketch or tone up tissue paper uh, actually it's just not going to stop barking I don't know if you can see it so anyways <clears throat> so what I like about these type of daughters is you can easily edge things without getting out a brush I mean that's Oh, you can't see it because it's too, too much the same. Let's do it here. So you don't have to get out a brush and you can edge things. I do like that. So hopefully, you know, who am I kidding? I didn't buy the distress markers. I didn't see the need to. Because I've got a whole bunch of markers that I already don't use. Um, so I do like the, the dauber thing. I just don't like how they dry out in them. Hey, Susan. Alright, so what was I saying? Now I forget. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't buy the markers, but I will probably will buy the paints. Darcy still can't find her crocodile. That's it. Get out the hammer. Go old school. All right. So I'm going to take a baby wipe here. And uh, first go gently to get the splots. Hopefully get the splots. I just hmm, won't see them because the too much pigment. I don't think I waited long enough. I only see one splot. Let me get out the uh, paper towel. Either that or I just didn't put enough water.
Right, so I am going to wipe off a couple of areas here. My splots didn't turn out so well. It's fine. Not that they didn't turn out so well, they just didn't turn out really at all. Simon's not home right now, so I might have to take a high rate or something. Oh, there'll be another layer, Dar. Don't you worry about that, my friend. Uh, I'm finding the paint's really building up in the side of the brushes here, but because it seems like I'm wiping a lot of it away. You know what I wish I had? A toothbrush. How weird is that? It's not really weird. I know a lot of you guys have toothbrushes. I'm just going to try to wrap my baby wipe around my brush here. So what I'm going to do, let me to get something in. And for some reason, maybe if I go this way, I can see it better. The glare, I can't figure out why there's so much glare on it. Like it makes it look so much lighter. Oh, that's the wrong way. So you can see some of the paint brushes, the gesso is coming off. It's just so weird. My color's just not coming out true. Maybe. One second. I think I can reset my color. I don't know if that's better or not, because it, in real life, here I go again, in real life it's very rich. <laughs> in real life. Wow. I wish I had some spray gesso, just saying. I'm going to use a 12 by 12 stencil. So this is how I store my other 12, my 12 by 12 stencils. And they just, let me move this to the side, I guess that would be smart. So these are the artist seller eight and a half by eleven mappage. Love them. It doesn't say on them which one is which. I probably if I went somewhere and looked it up, I could probably figure it out. Some chevrons. This may not work. This 
may not work. Yikes, sort of. Okay, I'm just going to make sure this is dry. Perfect. So what I'm going to try to do, <laughs> which could be an epic fail, you know, actually I hate the word epic. Does it not bother anybody else? Like if everything is epic, then nothing's epic. Like everything seems to be epic. Every epic movie of the year. Well, if everything's epic, then nothing's epic. All right, so this is some gesso. Let's see if I can uh, stipple it through without. Like I said, this is a big uh, experiment. This may or may not work. This is a dry brush I'm using. One that's uh, peeling pretty badly. I chose a stencil that was, you know, that I hoped I could go through. But again, we're just adding texture. There's going to be other layers of paint on here. So if it works, it works. If it doesn't, that's okay. And that's okay too. That's what I say, spray gesso. Whew. Oh yeah, these these purple heat guns are I'm telling you. I think I know Didi uses it. Anybody that, that got them, you know, <laughs> uh, sometime in the nineties, they don't seem to have problems. Now I hear you a lot of you guys go through heat guns like it's no tomorrow, they just die. I guess that's, you know, the way things are made these days. I want you to go out and buy another one. All right, let's see. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Now, not sure why I put out so much gesso. It's kind of silly. It's a little messy in some spots, but it'll add texture for sure. Mm -hmm. I did while while organizing last weekend. I uh, I found another heat gun. I don't even didn't even know I owned another heat gun, and I haven't plugged it in yet. But I think it's one of the quiet ones. I'll show you. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, I bought mine when I was in my teens, probably 18 or 19. So that. How many years is that? 15 years? I can't think of that. It's one of those nights. Alright, so I don't waste anything, so I always uh, have something handy. But I want to show you this heat gun. Maybe 
Nah, dang it. I think it's somewhere else. I think it's Anita's or something they call it, but um, I am pretty sure it's the Tim Holtz heat gun, you know, the earlier version. Because, you know, tonic, pretty much any of Tim Holtz tools or other tools that he just puts his name on, right? It's Little White Ranger, but I, I'm pretty sure Ranger maybe bought out this company. I would have gotten it a long time ago. Now, that heat gun, if you're using a heat, a, a real, like a construction heat gun, be careful. They get way, way hotter than, than these craft ones. Way hotter. Speaking of which, heat gun. That is bad news. One of my layers wasn't completely dry. I was reading the chat and all of a sudden I hear this like bubbling noise. Oh my goodness, Asha. Okay, one more. I'm going to use primary cyan. Then I'm going to have to go see the dogs. If I can get this open. And the thing is, they're not used to being home, the puppies, that are downstairs without anybody around. <clears throat> There's always one of us down there. All right. I really like this color. It's um, a lighter blue. Well, lighter than the phthalo, phthalo blue for sure. That's a thing. It's like babies. She doesn't need anything. They have one of those little emergency pee patch things. So she's just feeding. Cyan. Primary cyan.
make sure you get it all over and I'm going to that's my chat there. <clears throat> Sometimes I really gotta, when you work in 3D like this, you really gotta scrub to get underneath. Make sure you get in all those spots. So I'm gonna wipe it back again. Hmm? Would there have been a difference if you had just used a cyan through the stencil? Oh yeah. Um, what I'm gonna do now, Jean, when you wipe, when I wipe this back, the gesso. Uh, you'll see the texture through the gesso. The gesso will kind of resist. It, it gives it uh, uh, if I just push, put the cyan through it, you wouldn't see the cyan. I mean, you can kind of see the cyan. You can see the, but I added the, the gesso to add another dimension of texture, if that makes sense. Oh, I do have Payne's J. Payne's J. Payne's gray, but in fluid. Payne's gray is nice. I might do a layer of purple. Um, and then and then Payne's gray is just a finish. The drops the drops didn't work the first time. Quite possibly because when you drop it on there, just maybe it rolled it down. I don't know. But it did not work. Or I didn't leave it long enough and I just completely wiped it off. Oh, Do I need a new baby wipe? Because if I were to use this baby wipe, that's completely saturated with color, um, I wouldn't be wiping off any color. I'd just be moving it around. So now, and when you're working with artist grade, you kind of, you know, it takes a lot longer to dry than if you were using um, craft paint. So I always start, you know, trying to wipe off a little bit. And if it seems like I'm wiping off too much paint, then I just wait a little bit longer. So in some areas, I want to go back down to the white of the gesso. Some areas I want to leave. Somebody earlier mentioned I should use a Q-tip. I'm going to have to do that for my last few layers. I'll go to the bathroom and get some. Dollarama does sell baby wipes, but you wouldn't want to use them, um, in my opinion. They they dry with, there's, I guess, too much alcohol in them? I'm not sure. Maybe not alcohol. But they dry too fast, and they just tear. And that's just my opinion. It, it's another one of those things that if you spend a couple bucks to get the Huggies, they last a lot longer because they don't tear up and they don't dry up. and. I probably get yelled at by some other people in the room for saying that, but uh, I think there were some older screams where I screams streams where I might have even cursed when using one because I was so frustrated with it. It's amazing. Like Dollarama has some cool things. Dollarama, for those that are American, is one of the big dollar stores here in Canada. Like I even bought a cake pan. But they haven't
see, I really have to flip my baby wipe around um, to make sure that you're wiping off paint rather than just moving it. Because what happens, so much pigment comes off and ends up just moving the paint and uh, you won't see the layers. So you just want, when you're wiping off paint, you just kind of want to continue working it till you like what you see. It's getting really dark in between some of these edges here. Chick, chick, chick. Well, Vonda had a baby. Congratulations. Thanks, Daria. Yeah. Thanks for everyone coming. I know I think I lost a, a few people, probably with Asha barking. And, uh, but probably made a few people sick from the room tour. Oh, it was a great night. It was a good lesson on how to lose Ustream viewers. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad that you guys are here. And hopefully, like in the project. All oh. right. Sometimes, if you scrub hard enough, you can go all the way down to the. Uh, it really doesn't like. My gesso didn't stick to the rubber. Like, like why would gesso stick to rubber? What's wrong with me? So you can still see the white. And now when I put the... It's telling you. I wish I could show you what it really looks like because... There isn't that much white, but for some reason, my camera's glare is brutal tonight. Again, I don't know why. It's a better picture, but it's much richer in person. It's showing very washed out. I'll have to uh, tweet a picture of it later. Very washed out. Yeah, I'm going to have to add some purple to this bad boy, I think. And then some Payne's Gray. I wonder if I should stop barking or should I go downstairs? Heavy gel medium. Excuse me. Excuse me, extra heavy. Now, that's also what made the little ridges on it too, which I absolutely love. So this stuff is super duper thick. Consistency of, hmm, gel. And, you know, this stuff, this medium, I mean, I use it as a glue, but you can also mix it with your paints to create um, extra texture. So, say like right now, let's find the purple I want to use, what color of purple. Let's go for medium violet. Since I have to be downstairs in a minute. Ten, Valerie. <clears throat> ten. I know that because I have to make sure I'm out of the gym by ten before I can. Hi, Sharon. We were just showing. I was just showing Sharon the beautiful um, doors. 
not just, but earlier I was showing the beautiful door napkin. You see? All right, it's so got a palette knife, so it's thick, too sticky thick, and then you can mix it into your color. It doesn't change the color. It just makes it that much thicker. So even though it's white, doesn't change, doesn't lighten your paint, just makes it thicker. So you can put it on a brush or with a palette knife. I'm just going to add spots. Especially around the edges, and it's like frosting. It's it's that's actually that's a consistency. I I don't suggest eating it. Um, uh oh, bad news. Stuck it in the corner, and it dries clear. Yeah, when I first when I first glued it down, like I said, it took two days to dry. Um, but uh, yeah, it dries clear and it will dry in whatever peak you leave it in. So whatever texture you put into it, that's how it's going to dry. Somebody's making noise. A lot of reminders going off. So this project's going to take a while because now I have to let this dry, which is okay because I have to go down and rescue the puppies. I apologize for her going crazy, wanting attention. And now when I put uh, the phthalo blue, uh, excuse me, the um, Payne's gray, when this dries, I put a layer of Payne's gray, then it'll it'll still, I might do a layer of gesso, just a light layer of gesso, but you want to get those peaks, it'll show you the, the texture even more. So, when I put more layers of paint on, that texture will show up. Dang it. Now my phone's going to go crazy. I had to figure out what's wrong. I, I took the camera down to show my room earlier and it just hasn't been the same since. Because that looks funny on camera. But I'm telling you, the, the different spots doesn't look funny in real life. <laughs> and when I... When I add the rest of the stuff, or it'll, I think, in my opinion, will show up even nicer. But I appreciate everybody coming. Uh, it was so good to see everybody. I'll tweet pictures and stuff of this when uh, when it's done. I know it was a jam-packed show. I talked a lot early on. Between cats, meowing, dogs, barking. Oh boy. I can't wait to show you what this looks like finished. Thanks, everyone. Oh my goodness. You know what it is? I have this reminder thing popping up. I think that's what it is. Yeah, a whole bunch of reminders. Let's turn it off. Alright guys, have a good night.